I'm ding dong Danny O'Reilly. I'm as Dublin, as Coddle, Stout, and a stash of automatic weapons. More dub than the Dubliners, more furious than the Furies, the lad who put the lad back into ballot. That's me, my fan. Yeah. No, ding dong, you're right. You're on now in a minute. I'm coming, yeah. yeah. No, I'm yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm here. <laughs> Question for you. Do you love Ireland? Yeah. How much do you love it? Yeah. Well, I, 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 I'd ride Ireland. <laughs> Don't know how I do it. Probably be a kind of a, a, a doggy style type of a thing. <laughs> and I do know uh, the arsehole would be Waterford. <laughs> no surprises there, I suppose. <laughs> but um, I tell you, you see, I don't need anything else, only Ireland. You know, I don't need any dirty mags, anything like that. That's all I need. <laughs> Honest to God, wait, wait till you see it, look. Oh. What do you think of that? Would you look at it? Have to admit, not a great arse on it. But not a bad pair of tits. Hanging a bit low, I suppose. Of course, up here, bit of a headache. Like they used to say, tension in this area here leads to pain down here, in my gaff. Okay, Wolf, you want to take that? I'd like to introduce you to my son here. Come out, Wolf. My son, Wolf O'Reilly, named after the great Wolf Tone. I have to say, very proud. He has helped me reach a younger generation. Wolf has been involved in youth culture since the glue sniffing in the early 80s. <laughs> now he's on to much harder things. I know it's not what I had planned from, but sure, the way I look at it is, wouldn't it be worse if he arrived home with a degree or something? He was born the son of a fish woman, some 53 odd year ago, on a good Friday. Which of course meant me mother missed her best fish day of the year. I tell you, I got some walloping for that. My father was a corner boy in Walkinstown village who sadly lost the will to live when they stuck in that dirty big roundabout, removing all the corners. Okay, we're going to do one of those kind of 1916 type ballads and all that type of thing now. Uh, I don't know, I don't, do you like 1916? <laughs> I love it, yeah, I have to say now, I love all the, oh, the one thing I don't understand about 1916 is why did they take over a bleeding post office and a biscuit factory? Why not a bleeding brewery? 
And us being Irish, then they'd have had us by the balls. <laughs> and at least the next morning, they'd have had an excuse. We did what? Oh, oh no. Anyway, this is a beautiful Irish ballad. A song called The Crack We Had The Day We Died for Ireland. <laughs> Thanking you. Come on, let's see his clap. One frosty morn, a rebel knows to smell the British coming. And Pierce said, You must come and fight, or else you're a big frilly woman. So he went to catch the rebel bus, but me ma said, Hold your whist. If you don't aid up your coddle, well, you'll feel no British fist. Well, a rat tat tat, a rat tat tat, the drummers they did roll. Boom, boom, the cannons they did roll. The rifles they did go, the crack we had the day we died for Ireland. When the battle it was over, sure we all lay there in bits. There were arms and legs and bottoms and a couple of pair of tits. There was no to do but lie there as my comrades' corpses stank. So I raised the only limb I'd left and had myself a wank. Well, a rat tat tat, a rat tat tat, the drummers they did roll. Boom, boom, the cannons they did roar. The rifles they did go, the crack we had the day we died for Ireland. The crack we had the day we died for Ireland. The crack we had the day we. Died for